Hey friends, I'm in between hikes right now, which means I've been spending a lot of time poring over maps and reading trail guides, figuring out logistics, just that general planning for future trips. So I thought, why not share my process for planning a trip or a hike? And I've decided I'm gonna do this as a multi-part series of videos, just because I know for myself, I'm less likely to watch a video if it's like 30, 45, 60 minutes long. It's kind of difficult to just sit down and focus on only that for that period of time. And if I am gonna come back to it later, I usually forget about it and never finish it. So just putting it into bite-sized segments. Also, you may not even want or need every bit of information that's shared. There might just be one little aspect of the planning process you want to know about. And uh, it's a lot easier to just pick the video that focuses on that rather than scrolling through a whole however minute long video to find that part you're looking for. And so you know what to expect. And also because we live in a time in which you have to disclaim pretty much everything. We're not gonna go into all the nitty gritty details of leave no trace and filtering water and general safety. This series is going to assume you have some hiking experience and just share what I do to plan a hike. So definitely not uh, the ultimate hiking authority by any means, just sharing my personal experience, how I do it. That being said and out of the way, let's get into some of the resources I use to plan my hikes. So the first is the good old fashioned paper map. I love having just a hard copy of the map of the area I'm going to be exploring for a number of reasons. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of very visual and I love seeing a representation of the hike before I go out and actually do it. I like to see the different trails that are connected in the area, what water sources run through or near the trail. I also like getting to see what points of interest will be marked along the way. So some maps will mark where campsites are, some will mark this overlook or just the general points of interest. I also get an idea of what the elevation gain and loss is going to be um, based on just the topography. So I love having that paper map to reference when planning my trips. Next in the good old fashioned category are trail guides. So I like having both the written version of it to go along with the visual representation of a trail or hike that I'm going to do. A lot of these trail guides break it down by like the tenth of the mile. This is the Foothills Trail Guide. So it'll tell you um, in different distance increments what there is along the way. And oftentimes the trail guides will tell you about things that you may not be able to find in trip reports or you know see on a map. Just those extra little pieces of information that are very helpful to have like where a water source might be, where a campsite might be. So if it's a shorter hike or trail I'm going to be doing that doesn't necessarily have a guide to go along with it, what I'll do is find a blog post or a trip report. I really love seeing the short trail guides on hiking upwards or the hiking project. This one for the Black Mountain Crest has been incredibly helpful. And this author kind of does like the guidebook does going through like by the tenth of the mile, what obstacles you encounter, what campsites along the way and water sources. So when it's a trail that doesn't necessarily have a guidebook, keeping a binder I've found is very helpful to kind of save that information about a hike for when I'm ready to do it. So that brings us to number three, all trails. I don't use it as an on-trail resource. I find that using it for tracking and um, just finding my GPS location, it drains my battery. It's also hard to see trails in the surrounding area. I've also found sometimes that um, it's inaccurate, so the mileage may be listed incorrectly, 
or it will tell me on the screen I'm hiking way up here on a ridge somewhere but I'm standing on the trail looking at the blaze looking at the sign it's very clear I'm where I'm supposed to be but it thinks I'm over yonder somewhere so all trails is a resource I use strictly for the planning aspect it has a lot of really great information for um, planning now I honestly don't know what different features are included in the free account versus the pro account I've got the pro account so with that I have access to pictures other people have posted from their hike waypoints they've marked on the map whether that's campsites or a cool overlook a water source I can also look at their reviews and what they had to say about the trail sometimes you got to weed through those reviews um, but more often than not people provide very helpful information and it tells you you know how recently that review was posted so if they were on the trail two weeks ago two days ago and a lot of people do post their full trip reports which I've found pretty helpful they share where they camped each night if this water source is still there or not so it is a fantastic resource in planning I just haven't found it to be all that great when tracking or using it on the trail itself now number four the thing I actually use to track my location and my route when on the trail is Gaia GPS so once I've compiled all my information from trail guides paper maps all trails I plot my route there place my waypoints um, my perspective campsites water sources all of that information I just plug it into Gaia and my husband decided now is the perfect time to get his revenge on this tree stump it's been like his white whale this week he has to destroy and dig up this tree stump to plant a new flower bed and lastly is an itinerary planning sheet I've got a pre-made fill-in-the-blank template that I put together on just a word document it doesn't even have to be that fancy it can be note paper where you write all of this information down but just another place that your people back home can see where you're going what you're doing um, as well as for myself something that is in written form can complement what I've put on my map or on my GPS app of how many miles I'm doing what trails I'm on where I'm camping just all the details we've already talked about and covered in one coherent plan I hope you enjoyed this first part in a series of videos on how I plan my trips or hikes next time we're gonna be focusing on deciding where to go and actually planning the route and we're gonna take a look at a real trip I'm planning to go on so not just theoretical all of those details uh, will be covered next time so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time.